Chapter 4. Zeptoformic MBTI and the Brain. Section 1. Outline. In this video series, we are using the structure of the zeptoform. In Chapter 2, for example, we use the zeptoform in order to integrate physics, music theory, and personality type theory. Then, in this video, we use the zeptoform in order to integrate eneotypes, MBTI types, and the geometrical structure of the brain. This is the three-dimensional structure of the zeptoform. As discussed in the introduction of this video series, the zeptoform theory has been developed, in part, based on the Enneagram theory. The nine points of the Enneagram correspond to the nine points of the zeptoform. Enneotypes can be divided into thinking, feeling, and instinct. These are called the three centers. Each center has three types, and two of them have opposite tendencies, as indicated by the out and the in. The out and the in of the three centers can be illustrated as three layers, as illustrated. The out and the in of the three centers are related to extroversion and introversion. But, point one is changed into extroversion. Also, it goes up from the instinctive center to the thinking center. The reason was discussed in Chapter 1, Section 1. In the framework of MBTI, Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, which has been developed based on Jungian typology, there are 16 personality types, as illustrated. MBTI types are defined by how to use cognitive functions. On the other hand, eneotypes are defined by core motivations. Then, these core motivations are related to different ways to use their cognitive functions. In other words, eneotypes and MBTI types are related. Note. In order to understand this integration, basic knowledge of the zeptoform is required. Therefore, if you have not yet watched the first video, the introduction and chapter one, we recommend that you do so before you watch this one. Chapter four, section two, yin and yang. Extroversion and introversion. As illustrated in this figure, MBTI types, are divided into extroversion and introversion. There are some different definitions of extroversion versus introversion. In the zeptoform theory, we focus on the following definition. Extroverts tend to feel that the outside world, which can be experienced physically, is more real than the inside world. On the other hand, introverts tend to feel that the inside world, which cannot be experienced physically, but mentally, is more real than the outside world. Then, from this definition, other characteristics of extroversion versus introversion can be derived. For example, if you think that the outside world is more real, you tend to find values or merits in the outside world. Consequently, you tend to be attracted to the outside world. Also, you can get energy from interacting with the outside world. In this way, you become sociable and active. On the other hand, if you think that the inside world is more real, you tend to find values in the inside world. Consequently, you tend to be introspective. Extroversion represents yang, and introversion represents yin. Then, in terms of sensation and intuition, the former represents yang, and the latter represents yin. Therefore, in terms of totality, the yang quality is represented by the combination of extroversion and sensation, and the yin quality is represented by the combination of introversion and intuition. An ES type, which is the combination of extroversion and sensation, tends to focus on concrete experiences in the physical world. On the other hand, an IN type, which is the combination of introversion and intuition, tends to focus on abstract ideas. In terms of population, the former, which is the combination of extroversion and sensation, is 33.8%, and the latter, which is the combination of introversion and intuition, is 11.3%. As we can see, there is the violation of CP symmetry. The ratio between yang and yin is about 3 to 1.
CP violation was mainly discussed in Chapter 2, Section 2. The numbers in this figure are the numbers of people who joined an online survey about the correlation between MBTI types and eneotypes. The topic of the survey was very abstract, and, as already discussed, IN types are interested in abstract ideas. Related to this, many IN types joined the test. The sample size of IN types was 1,627. On the other hand, the sample size of ES types was only 132. Here is another survey about the same topic. As we can see, the sample size of ES types is the smallest, which is 731. On the other hand, the sample size of IN types is the biggest, which is 13,543. As already discussed, in terms of population, IN types are the smallest group. But when it comes to the domain of abstract ideas, they tend to create the biggest group. In other words, online tests about the correlation between MBTI types and eneotypes tend to create sample selection bias. In order to fix this problem, we needed to make some statistical adjustments. These statistical adjustments will be discussed later. Type 1, Type 3, Type 7, and Type 2 tend to be extroverted sensation types, and Type 5 and Type 4 tend to be introverted intuitive types. These six types will be discussed in Section 3. Type 6 tends to be ambivert, and Type 9 tends to be neutrovert. These two types will be discussed in Section 4. Type 8 tends to be the extroverted instinctive type, and this category does not perfectly fit into the traditional framework of MBTI theory. This category will be discussed in Section 5. Chapter 4, Section 3, Sensation and Intuition Type 1, Type 3, Type 7, and Type 2 tend to be extroverted sensation types, and Type 5 and Type 4 tend to be introverted intuitive types. First, we discuss sensing types. Sensing type Sensing types are divided into the following two major categories, the SP temperament and the SJ temperament. SP is sensing and perceiving, and SJ is sensing and judging. The difference between perceiving and judging can be described in the following way. Sensation and intuition are considered to be perceiving functions. On the other hand, thinking and feeling are considered to be judging functions. As we can see in this figure, type 7 tends to be a perceiving type, and type 1 tends to be a judging type. Perceiving types have a tendency to perceive many things, and they choose what they want from many options. Because of this, they can be called flexible types. On the other hand, judging types have a tendency to judge and stick to their decisions in a decisive manner. Therefore, they can be called decisive types. Type 7 is a flexible type, and type 1 is a decisive type. Type 7 tends to have the SP temperament, and type 1 tends to have the SJ temperament. The SP is called the experiencer, and the SJ is called traditionalist. These two temperaments are described by Paul Teeger and Barbara Teeger in the following way. Perhaps above all else, experiencers value their freedom to respond to life as it unfolds. They thrive on action and excitement, and experience physical sensations with an intensity. Playful and fun-loving, Experiencers are often skilled performers, extremely adaptable and flexible. On the other hand, among the things that traditionalists value most are responsibility, duty, and service to society. Serious, responsible, straightforward, consistent, well-mannered, and respectful. They don't deviate easily from the way they think things should be done. In the framework of MBTI, Type 7 is not only a thinking type, but also a feeling type. That is, although sevens tend to repress their negative emotions, they tend to emphasize positive feelings. Type 3 tends to use the tendencies of both, the SJ and the SP, pragmatically. This is related to the functioning mode, which includes the traits of both Type 1 and Type 7. But Type 3 is slightly leaning toward the SJ temperament. Related to this, 
as discussed many times, point 3 superposes on point 1. That is also one aspect of the functioning mode. Type 2 also has both SJ and SP, but statistically, it is leaning toward the SJ temperament. Both type 1 and type 2 are super ego types, as well as willpower types, and that is related to judging functions. As discussed in Chapter 1, the six eneotypes among the nine eneotypes are divided into will types, action types, and insight types. The characteristics of will types are related to judging functions. The Analysis of Type 1 As already discussed, Type 1 has the SJ temperament. Among the all MBTI personality types, SJ types are four of them, as illustrated. Because Type 1 is a thinking type, the characteristics of Type 1 can be seen in ESTJ and ISTJ. The difference between these two types will be discussed step by step. This figure was mainly discussed in Chapter 1, Section 4. The left side represents extroversion, and the right side represents introversion. In this figure, there is no violation of CP symmetry. However, without the violation of CP symmetry, this figure creates a contradiction, as already discussed. Then, in order to fix this problem, the location of type 1 needs to move toward extroversion. That is the violation of CP symmetry. As we can see in this figure, type 1 with wing 2 is more extroverted than type 1 with wing 9. With that said, type 1 with wing 2 tends to be ESTJ, and type 1 with wing 9 tends to be ISTJ. First, we will analyze the psychological structure of ESTJ. Because ESTJ is a judging type, the judging function, which is thinking, is prioritized for dealing with the outside world. That is, the thinking function becomes extroverted thinking. It is called the dominant function. Then, the sensing function becomes the auxiliary function. It is used internally. Therefore, it is considered to be introverted sensing. As we can see, ESTJ is an extroverted thinking type, but the sensing function becomes introverted sensing. Extroverted thinking tends to rely on external rules. Therefore, TJ types tend to be moralistic. Also, they are good at organizational skills. Introverted sensation relies on the internal memories of past sensory experiences. Therefore, it is intrinsically related to the traditional value system of type 1. As we can see, the combination of extroverted thinking and introverted sensation is intrinsically related to the characteristics of type 1. Next, we will analyze the psychological structure of ISTJ. As we can see, the psychological structure of ESTJ and that of ISTJ are similar. The main difference is the location of the dominant function. In the case of ESTJ, the dominant function is located on the outside, and that of ISTJ is located on the inside. Now, as we can see in this figure, in terms of the judging function, both ESTJ and ISTJ are extroverted thinking types. That is the main characteristic of type 1. As already discussed, type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 7 tend to be sensation types, but they can also be intuitive types, as indicated by this figure. For example, type 2 tends to be ESFJ or ENFJ. ESFJ is called the caregiver. This naming perfectly represents the characteristics of type 2. On the other hand, ENFJ is called the protagonist. With that said, the most typical characteristics of type 2 is represented by the caregiver, not the protagonist. Type 7 tends to be ESTP, ESFP, ENTP, or ENFP. As we can see, type 7 tends to be a perceiving type, not a judging type. ESTP and ESFP are extroverted sensation. On the other hand, ENTP and ENFP are extroverted intuition. Extroverted sensation tends to focus on the immediate stimulus to the five senses. On the other hand, extroverted intuition 
tends to focus on new possibilities for the future. Therefore, for example, ENTP is called the inventor. Leonardo da Vinci, for example, is considered to be ENTP. Also, he is considered to be type 7. Type 3 tends to be ESTP, ESTJ, ENTJ, or ENTP. As we can see, type 3 is the combination of the judging type and the perceiving type. But, as already discussed previously, type 3 is slightly leaning toward the judging type. As discussed previously, type 1 tends to be ESTJ or ISTJ. He can also be ENTJ or INTJ. As we have seen, type 1, type 3, type 7, and type 2 are not only sensation types, they can also be intuitive types. However, the ratio between sensation types and intuitive types is about 7 to 3. Sensation types are 73%, and intuitive types are 27%. Then, the percentage of ES type is 33.8%, and that of EN type is 15.6%. As we can see, there are more ES types than EN types. That is, these types in this figure are mainly sensation types. Intuitive type Intuitive types are divided into the following two major categories, the NT temperament and the NF temperament. NT is intuition and thinking, and NF is intuition and feeling. As we can see, unlike sensing types, the temperaments of intuitive types are not divided into judging and perceiving, but thinking and feeling. Type 5 tends to have the NT temperament, and type 4 tends to have the NF temperament. The former is called the conceptualizer, and the latter is called the idealist. These two temperaments are described by Paul Teeger and Barbara Teeger in the following way. Engaged in a perpetual quest for knowledge, conceptualizers are comfortable in the world of abstract ideas and theoretical concepts. They are logical, analytical, objective, and usually fair-minded. They enjoy applying their ingenuity to deal with complex issues. They are fiercely independent. On the other hand, for the philosophical idealists, life is a journey of self-discovery, a perpetual search for meaning. Their mission is to understand as much about themselves and others, as they can. They place a high value on uniqueness and originality. Many idealists possess the soul of an artist. The combination of intuition and thinking is related to scientific invention and discovery. On the other hand, the combination of intuition and feeling is related to artistic creation. Type 5 tends to be INTJ or INTP. On the other hand, type 4 tends to be INFJ or INFP. First, we will analyze the difference between INTJ and INTP. As we can see in this figure, in the case of INTJ, the dominant function is introverted intuition, and the auxiliary function is extroverted thinking. On the other hand, in the case of INTP, the dominant function is introverted thinking, and the auxiliary function is extroverted intuition. The introverted thinking of INTP tends to be used to create the internal logical framework of ideas. In this process, necessary information for creating the framework can be obtained through extroverted intuition. Extroverted intuition has the tendency to see many different possibilities of objects and subjects in the process of observing the outside world. Unlike extroverted intuition, the introverted intuition of INTJ tends to focus on single idea, which is coming from the internal unconscious realm. Then, in order to substantiate this idea, extroverted thinking is used. That is, extroverted thinking has the tendency to focus on the practical utilization of ideas. On the other hand, the introverted thinking of INTP is not so much interested in practical utilizations of ideas. For INTP, logical thinking itself is meaningful and enjoyable. Einstein, for example, is considered to be INTP. On the other hand, Nikola Tesla is considered to be INTJ. Previously, we discussed the difference between Type 7 and Type 1. They are represented by ESTP and ESTJ. 
these two types are clearly different. On the other hand, INTJ and INTP are not so distinctively different. Related to this, these two types, INTJ and INTP, are represented by the same ENIA type, which is type 5. The reason why INTJ and INTP are not so distinctively different is the following. J of INTJ indicates a judging type. That is, the extroverted thinking of INTJ, which is a judging function, tends to be used to communicate with the outside world. But, unlike the judging function of ESTJ, the judging function of INTJ is not the dominant function. Therefore, compared to ESTJ, INTJ is not clearly a judging type, not a judging dominant type. A similar analysis can be applied to INTP. That is, although INTP is a perceiving type, it is not a perceiving dominant type. As we can see, in the case of introverted types, the judging type and the perceiving type are not clearly categorized. This is the main reason why INTJ and INTP are not distinctively different. The main characteristic of type 5 is introverted thinking. In other words, typical characteristics of type 5 can be seen more clearly in INTP than INTJ. Related to this, Statistically, fives tend to identify themselves as INTP more than INTJ. As we can see in this figure, among all fives, INTP type 5 has the biggest number. 1,988 people identified themselves as INTP type 5. Then, the second is INTJ type 5, which is 1,309. As already discussed, one of the most typical characteristics of type 5 is introverted thinking. INTP uses introverted thinking. Therefore, INTP type 5 is more common than INTJ type 5. Among all IS 5s, ISTP type 5, which uses introverted thinking, has the biggest number, which is 152. Among all EN 5s, ENTP type 5, which uses introverted thinking, has the biggest number, which is 303. Among all ES5s, ESTP type 5, which uses introverted thinking, has the biggest number, which is 12. Next, we will analyze the difference between INFJ and INFP. As we can see in this figure, in the case of INFJ, the dominant function is introverted intuition, and the auxiliary function is extroverted feeling. On the other hand, in the case of INFP, the dominant function is introverted feeling, and the auxiliary function is extroverted intuition. The introverted feeling of INFP tends to focus on his or her own identity. That is, INFP wants to be unique and creative. On the other hand, the extroverted feeling of INFJ tends to focus on harmonious relationships with other people. The main characteristic of type 4 is introverted feeling. In other words, typical characteristics of type 4 can be seen more clearly in INFP than INFJ. Related to this, statistically, 4s tend to identify themselves as INFP more than INFJ. As we can see in this figure, among all 4s, INFP type 4 has the biggest number. 1,145 people identified themselves as INFP type 4. Then, the second is INFJ type 4, which is 971. As already discussed, one of the most typical characteristics of type 4 is introverted feeling. INFP uses introverted feeling. Therefore, INFP type 4 is more common than INFJ type 4. Among all IS4s, ISFP type 4, which uses introverted feeling, has the biggest number, which is 186. Among all EN4s, ENFP type 4, which uses introverted feeling, has the biggest number, which is 405. Among all ES4s, ESFP type 4, which uses introverted feeling, has the biggest number, which is 30. INTP and INFP are represented by different eneotypes. On the other hand, ESTP and ESFP are represented by the same eneotype. The reason 
can be explained in the following way. In the case of sensation types, temperaments are divided by SJ and SP. That is, ESTP and ESFP have the same temperament. Also, the dominant function of ESTP and that of ESFP are the same, which is extroverted sensation. Therefore, they are similar. On the other hand, in the case of intuitive types, temperaments are divided by NT and NF. That is, INTP and INFP have different temperaments. Also, the dominant function of INTP and that of INFP are different. They are introverted thinking and introverted feeling, respectively. Therefore, INTP and INFP are represented by different eneotypes. This figure was mainly discussed in Chapter 1, Section 2. The left side represents the perspective of Type 4, and the right side represents the perspective of Type 5. These perspectives will be discussed step by step. As we can see in this figure, the archetypal cognitive functions of Type 4 is slightly different from INFP. In this figure, the dominant function and the auxiliary function are both introverted. They are introverted feeling and introverted intuition. The combination of introverted feeling and introverted intuition is related to the perspective of holy origin. That is, the perspective of holy origin focuses on the core of oneself, focusing on the single, inner, primal subject, which is the true origin. From the perspective of holy origin, the essential function of self-realization emerges. That is called the essential identity, or the essential self. That is also called the point. The point is experienced as a point of light, as discussed in Chapter 2, Section 2. This point of light can be experienced at various times throughout our lives, creating a sense of many points. When we connect these points, the thread of light emerges as a lifeline. That is, the point is transformed into the thread. Various experiences in our lives are connected to one essential meaning, which is the meaning of our true identity. This experience was described by Al Mass in the following way. The point gives us the capacity to find the thread. I'll give you an example, the issue of whether you have your own value. This began to come out in different areas, in your marriage, your friendships, and your job. You might think that I'm not sure whether I'm valuable or not. You are now starting to see the thread. Dealing with the question of value, might bring up a sense of deficiency of value, feeling worthless and insignificant, seeing what happened in your childhood that made you feel that you're not worthy, that you're not valuable. That's following the thread. If you stay with the thread, the issue of value will develop. You might wake up the next day and sense a big hole in your chest. If you look into the hole, you might realize that, it is specifically the feeling of no value, of worthlessness. Other things might be arising besides the central thread of value. The feeling of worthlessness or lack of value might bring up anger and rage that people don't value you. If you're not focused, you could go on a tangent about anger. It's important to explore the anger, but it's better to stay with the anger that's related to the issue of value, rather than be angry about just anything. So, staying with the thread means maintaining a thread of focus. It's like a point of light that lights something up. This lighting up of the various experiences begins to compose a thread. As you follow the thread over time, the thread becomes the essential aspect of value. Experience becomes the experience of value itself. In this quote, the practitioner is focusing on one's personal values, sense of self-worth and worthlessness, and that is related to the function of introverted feeling. Introverted feeling brings about the motivation to find underlying causes of worthlessness and anger. Then, in order to connect multiple experiences, which are related to one's values, the insight of introverted intuition is required. Introverted intuition seeks to uncover underlying patterns and meanings, focusing on abstract concepts and possibilities. It explores the unconscious connections between events, often bypassing concrete experiences to uncover hidden insights. In this way, introverted intuition can find overarching life themes or patterns, seeking to understand the deeper meaning behind these feelings. 
The concept of following a thread, focusing on the central issue, aligns with the function of introverted intuition. Note 1. In this process, the transformation from extroverted feeling to introverted feeling happens. For example, extroverted feeling prioritizes relationships with others and can feel hurt when a lack of appreciation is experienced, feeling unvalued by others. Then, in order to internalize this experience based on internal standards, the function of introverted feeling is required. No two. In this process, we need to be attuned to the memories of past experiences, and that is related to the function of introverted sensing. That is, in this process, introverted sensing is used as the third function, as illustrated. However, remembering the concrete sensory details of past events is not the main focus of this process. Note 3. As discussed, this figure represents the archetypal cognitive functions of type 4. However, it does not mean this is the most common combination of cognitive functions for type 4. In reality, in order for type 4 to communicate with the outside world, she needs to develop an extroverted function. That is, the archetypal type 4 tends to use her auxiliary function as an extroverted function. In other words, the archetypal type 4 is mainly changed into usual INFP. This is related to the characteristics of type 4 with wing 5. That is, the archetypical wing 5 brings about the tendency of extroverted intuition. The combination of introverted thinking and extroverted intuition is related to the perspective of holy omniscience. The perspective of holy omniscience tends to see many different aspects of reality, and it integrates them to see the whole picture. That is, unlike the function of introverted intuition, which tends to focus on a single idea, the function of extroverted intuition tends to see many different types of subjects and objects. Then, these aspects are integrated by introverted thinking. Note. This figure was discussed in Chapter 3, Section 6. Point 4 belongs to the domain of individual, and that is related to the combination of introverted feeling and introverted intuition. That is, the first function and the second function are both introverted. On the other hand, point 5 belongs to the domains of both individual and collective. The domain of collective of point 5 is related to extroverted intuition. That is, although fives tend not to interact with the people in the social world, they tend to observe the system of the whole world, which is the collective of many different objects. That is related to the perspective of holy omniscience. In this section, we found the correlation between MBTI types and six eneotypes. Then, other three eneotypes will be discussed in the following two sections. Chapter 4, Section 4, Ambivert and Neutrovert. Ambivert. Type 6 tends to be ambivert. That is the combination of extroversion and introversion. Wing 7 tends to bring about the characteristics of extroversion, and wing 5 tends to bring about the characteristics of introversion. That is, type 6 tends to have two wings, oscillating between wing 7 and wing 5. But, one of the two wings tends to be slightly emphasized for each individual type 6. Type 6 with wing 7 tends to be an extroverted type. On the other hand, type 6 with wing 5 tends to be an introverted type. The former tends to be ESTP or ESFP. On the other hand, the latter tends to be ISTJ or ISFJ. In addition to these types, we can also see ESTJ type 6 and ESFJ type 6. In the case of these types, we can see both wing 7 and wing 5. Likewise, in the case of ISTP and ISFP, we can see both wing 7 and wing 5. However, ISTP type 6 and ISFP type 6 are not so common, and ISTJ type 6 and ISFJ type 6 are the most common. That is, on average, type 6 is a judging type. Statistical Paradox As already discussed, Type 6 with Wing 7 tends to be ESTP or ESFP. However, 
According to some psychological surveys about the correlation between MBTI types and ENIA types, these two combinations are not so common. This inconsistency can be solved in the following way. Wing 7 tends to bring about the tendency of an ES type. With that said, as already discussed, ES types tend to be the least interested in taking psychological tests, which are based on abstract ideas. According to some psychological survey about the correlation between MBTI types and ENIA types, the ratio between type 6 with wing 7 and type 6 with wing 5 is about 1 to 3. Because of this ratio, the characteristics of type 6 with wing 7 tend to be neglected. This is a sampling bias. Intuitive type 6 Although, 6s tend to be sensation-oriented, we can also see intuitive 6s, as illustrated. Especially, wing 5 brings about the tendency of intuitive type. They tend to be INTJ or INFJ. Note As discussed, type 6 tends to be ambivert. However, it does not mean all ambiverted types are type 6. Other ENIA types can be ambiverts. In other words, there are different types of ambiverted people. Ambivert and neutrovert. As already discussed, type 6 tends to be an ambivert. That is the combination of extrovert and introvert. On the other hand, type 9 tends to be a neutrovert. The difference between ambivert and neutrovert can be described in the following way. The ambivert of type 6 is the state of mixture. It is like the mixture of ice water and boiling water, which tends to bring about conflicts and anxiety. On the other hand, neutrovert of type 9 is the state of fusion. It is like lukewarm water, which brings about calmness. As mainly discussed in Chapter 1, Section 7, the process from type 6 to type 9 is an integration process. In this process, the problem with the conflicts and anxiety of type 6 can be resolved. The state of mixture is composed of multiple states. That is, in the state of mixture, type 6 tends to shift from one state to another, rapidly and unexpectedly. Riso and Hudson describe this tendency in the following way. It is difficult to predict the state 6S will be in from moment to moment. It is impossible to understand 6S without understanding their oscillating nature. If you have difficulty understanding someone who is a mass of contradictions, you are probably dealing with a 6. The ambivert is not only the mixture of introversion and extroversion, but also the mixture of thinking and feeling. Related to this, Naranjo classified 6s as a thinking type, but Riso and Hudson classified them as a feeling type. Thinking and feeling are judging functions, that is, the ambivert tends to use judging functions intensely. Unlike the ambivert, the neutrovert, which is type 9, tends to dissociate from judging functions, not having their own firm opinions, do not judge. They tend to be neutral. As we have seen, type 6 is the ambivert, and type 9 is the neutrovert. Also, type 9 tends to shift between the neutral mode and the feeling mode. When they are in the neutral mode, they are perceiving, without judging. That is, they tend to dissociate from judging functions. Related to this, according to Riso and Hudson, nines tend to dissociate not only from thinking and instinct, but also from feeling. In the neutral mode, both the first function and the second function become perceiving functions. In other words, nines tend to have the characteristics of both the sensation type and the intuition type. The characteristics of sensation of type nine can be described in the following way. They have a tendency to assimilate into outside objects, in which they use the function of sensing, that is the experience of the sensation of empathic fusion with others. However, they are not totally sensation-oriented. Sensing types are kinesthetic, and they tend to focus on something real, tangible, concrete, and graspable, so that they can experience an immediate stimulus to the senses. Contradictory to this definition, nines have a tendency to dissociate from real objects. Also, they are imaginative and impractical. These tendencies are tendencies of intuitive types. As we can see, 
Type 9 tends to have the characteristics of both, the sensation type and the intuition type. As already discussed, Type 9 tends to shift between the neutral mode and the feeling mode. When 9s are in the feeling mode, they tend to be ISFP. That is the combination of extroverted sensing and introverted feeling. However, in the case of ISFP Type 9, introverted feeling is not so strongly introverted, and the extroverted sensation is not so strongly extroverted as illustrated. Related to this, 9s tend to mistype themselves as Type 2. As discussed in Section 3, Archetypal Type 2 tends to use extroverted feeling and introverted sensation. As discussed, the dominant function of Type 9 is not strongly introverted. Introverted types, such as Type 4 and Type 5, have a tendency to dissociate from other people. Related to this, they tend to be introspective, and thus, they tend to have a clear sense of self. On the other hand, Nines have a tendency to assimilate into someone else, even though the image of that person may be idealized or neutralized. Because of this, they have a vague sense of self. This tendency is described by Riso and Hudson in the following way. Their sense of self is undefined. Average nines have little sense of who they are, apart from those they have identified with, they see a little of themselves in all the types. Even relatively healthy nines still have a somewhat diffused sense of self, because it is based on their capacity to be receptive to others, and to be unself-conscious. As we can see, nines have a tendency to assimilate into outside objects, and thus they have a vague sense of self. This tendency is clearly different from that of introverted types. But their other tendency, not to relate to real objects of the outside world, does not fit into the definition of the extroverted type either. Therefore, they are categorized as neutrovert. Note. Riso and Hudson classified type 9 as introvert, but Naranjo classified type 9 as extrovert. The cause of this discrepancy is that the category of neutrovert has been overlooked. Statistical paradox. As already discussed, when nines are in the feeling mode, they tend to experience ISFP. However, in online MBTI communities, we can see that there are more INFP nines than ISFP nines. The reason can be explained in the following way. As mainly discussed in section two, intuitive types tend to enjoy talking about abstract ideas more than sensation types do. Also, sensation types tend to mistype themselves as intuitive types. According to MBTI manual, the percentage of IS types is 39.6% of the total population, and that of IN types is 11.3%. On the other hand, according to an online survey, the percentage of IS types is only 12.7%, and that of IN types is 64.2%. As we can see, there is a huge sample bias. In this online survey, IS nines are 356, and IN nines are 1,359. Among them, ISFP nines are 167, and INFP nines are 777. As we can see in this online survey, the number of INFP nines is greater than that of ISFP nines. However, among all ISFP eneotypes, the percentage of ISFP nines is 23.9%, and among all INFP eneotypes, the percentage of INFP nines is only 16.7%. As we can see, type nine tends to be ISFP more than INFP. This pattern can be seen in many other surveys. As we can see in this figure, the percentage of ISFP type nine is always greater than that of INFP type nine. As discussed previously, type nine tends to shift between the neutral mode and the feeling mode. Also, some nines tend to experience the thinking mode. When they are in the thinking mode, they tend to experience ISTP. With that said, some ISTP type nine tend to think that they are type five. Related to this, according to Riso and Hudson, male nines tend to misidentify themselves 
as type 5. It was described in the following way. Particularly, if they are well-educated and intelligent, average male nines tend to think that they are fives. As noted in the discussion of twos, average female nines tend to think they are twos. The two types, type 9 and type 5, are opposites in many ways. Nines are gentle, easygoing, patient, receptive, accommodating, and drawn to comforting thoughts, whereas fives are intense, strong-minded, high-strung, argumentative, and drawn to disturbing thoughts. Both types, employ a schizoid defense of the self, they detach from their feelings. The fundamental difference between the thinking of nines, and that of fives, is that, nines are impressionistic, and involved with generalities, synthesis, imaginative ruminations, and fanciful situations. Nines, typically do not want to take their ideas deeper, or question them, once they have reached certain conclusions, nor are they usually good at following up, once they have acted. By contrast, the thinking of fives, is highly concentrated, penetrating, laser-like, and almost microscopic in the specificity of its focus. Fives love details, losing themselves in research, scholarship, and complex intellectual pursuits. They think in depth, concentrating so much that they block out other perceptions, eventually to their detriment. By contrast, even brilliant nines, tend to have problems concentrating, they also tend to lose interest quickly, and to allow their attention to drift off, when they become bored or anxious. Einstein, for example, is considered to be type 5 by many Enneagram teachers. However, some people tend to think that he was type 9. A similar thing can be said for Carl Jung. That is, some people said he was type 5, but some other people said he was type 9. IS types As we can see in this figure, the percentage of IS types is the biggest. That is 39.6%. IS types are mainly represented by type 6 and type 9. As we can see, type 6 tends to be a judging type, and type 9 tends to be a perceiving type. In this section, we have discussed the ambivert of type 6 and the neutrovert of type 9. Chapter 4, Section 5, Instinctive Type In the framework of MBTI, there is no instinctive type. On the other hand, in the framework of the Zeptiform theory, the instinctive type is represented by type 8. In terms of sensation and intuition, type 8 is a sensation type. In this aspect, type 8 tends to resemble type 7. Both, type 7 and type 8 are extroverted sensation types. Also, they are both action types as discussed in Chapter 1. The six eneotypes among the nine eneotypes are divided into will types, action types, and insight types. The characteristics of action types are related to extroverted sensation. Note. As discussed, the characteristics of action types are related to the combination of extroversion and perceiving. Then, the characteristics of will types are related to the combination of extroversion and judging. Furthermore, the characteristics of insight types are related to the combination of introversion and intuition. The sensing function of type 8 can be used as a judging function. The judging function of type 8 is not thinking nor feeling, but the doing of instinct. This instinctive judgment is directly related to the gut feeling. According to MBTI, the judging function and the perceiving function are considered to be different functions. But, in the case of instinctive judgment, these two functions are merged into one unified function, that is, the gut feeling, which is one type of sensing function, can be used as a judging function. For example, when you encounter a dangerous situation, you may automatically experience a fighting spirit or fear, unconscious judgment about fight or flight. This is an experience of sensing and judging. Type 8 and Type 1 Type 1 has the SJ temperament. On the other hand, Type 8 has both, the SP and the SJ. In terms of decisiveness, the SJ of Type 8 tends to resemble that of Type 1. 
The SJ of type 1 is related to the superego, which is conscientious judgment. On the other hand, the SJ of type 8 is related to the ED, which is instinctive judgment. Unlike the conscientious judgment of type 1, instinctive judgment is unconscious judgment. The conscientious judgment of the superego is related to willpower. On the other hand, instinctive judgment, unconscious judgment, is directly related to action power. The difference between willpower and action power was mainly discussed in Chapter 1, Section 2. In the framework of MBTI, there is no instinctive judgment. Then, in terms of thinking and feeling, eights tend to prioritize thinking. Therefore, eights tend to identify themselves as ESTJ. However, as we have already seen, in the framework of the Zeptiform theory, this is not an accurate categorization of archetypical type 8. Instinct and Intuition The function of instinct tends to resemble that of intuition. Therefore, superficially, type 8 might be seen as an intuitive type. Related to this, in addition to ESTJ, 8s tend to identify themselves as ENTJ. But, as already discussed, the archetypical type 8 is not an intuitive type, but the instinctive type. The difference between intuition and instinct will be discussed step by step. Intuition is related to the visual perception, such as scientific visions and artistic visions. On the other hand, instinct is related to the kinesthetic perception, which is sensing, such as gut feeling. It brings about actions into the physical world for survival. Related to this, Claudio Naranjo describes type 8 as the most sensory motor of characters. The characteristic orientation of any a type 8 to a graspable and concrete here and now, the sphere of the sense and the body sense in particular, is a lusty clutching at the present, and an excited impatience toward memory, abstraction, anticipations, as well as a desensitization to the subtlety of aesthetic and spiritual experience. Concentration on the present is not simply as a manifestation of mental health, but the consequence of not deeming anything real that is not tangible and an immediate stimulus to the senses. We can recognize our Enya type 8 under the label of the extroverted sensation type. As we can see, type 8 is not an extroverted intuitive type, but an extroverted sensing type, or an extroverted instinctive type. Self-preservation versus social This figure was discussed in Chapter 3. In this figure, we can see levels of worldviews as well as instincts. In terms of instincts, we can see the levels of self-preservation instinct, sexual instinct, and social instinct. The archetypal type 8 represents self-preservation instinct. Self-preservation type 8 is described by Beatrice Chestnut in the following way. They may seek revenge without knowing why. In this way, self-preservation aids differ from the social aid or the sexual aid personality, both of which usually have a specific reason for acting in vengeful ways. As we can see, the decision-making of self-preservation type 8 tends to be unconscious, that is, instinctive judgment. On the other hand, the decision-making of social type 8 is not instinctive. Therefore, social type 8 is considered to be the counter-type of type 8. It means that social type 8 does not look like type 8. That is described by Chestnut in the following way. Social 8s represent a contradiction. The 8 archetype rebels against social norms, but the social 8 is more loyal, less aggressive. This 8 often doesn't look like an 8. This type resembles type 1. As discussed previously, in the framework of MBTI, 8s tend to identify themselves as ESTJ as well as ENTJ. This identification can be seen, most clearly, in the characteristics of social type 8. In other words, social type 8 tends to be a thinking type. However, as already discussed, social type 8 is considered to be the counter type of type 8. It does not represent the archetypal type 8. Note. Sexual type 8 was discussed in Chapter 3. As we have seen in this section and the previous sections, the Zeptiform 
can be used to integrate Jungian types and eneotypes. In order to integrate these two systems, we must consider the violation of CP symmetry. That is, the nine eneotypes are not symmetrically located in the framework of Jungian typology. This violation of symmetry is intrinsically related to the creation of the universe, as discussed in Chapter 2. Chapter 4, Section 6, Kinesthetic and Visual As already discussed, thinking and feeling are judging functions, and sensation and intuition are perceiving functions. As illustrated in this figure, the combination of sensing and feeling is related to kinesthetic perception, and the combination of intuiting and thinking is related to visual perception. Type 2 tends to focus on kinesthetic experiences. That is, type 2 tends to value warm-hearted close contact with others. Type 8, which is the instinctive type, is the most kinesthetic. When he is instinctively perceiving something, the kinesthetic perception is dominant, such as the gut feeling. The people with type 5 personality tend to focus on visual experiences. They visually observe many things from an objective viewpoint, and dissociate from kinesthetic experiences, they tend to be detached from the physical world. Riso and Hudson describe this tendency of type 5 in the following way. Increasingly detached as they become involved with complicated ideas or imaginary worlds. Become preoccupied with their visions. The combination of intuition and thinking is related to visionary thinkers. The people with type 4 personality tend to perceive many things visually, and then judge them kinesthetically. As discussed previously, intuition is a perceiving function and feeling is a judging function. Type 4 tends to visualize impressive and tragic situations vividly and deeply feel them kinesthetically. This tendency intensifies aesthetic experiences as well as traumatic experiences. It is related to depressive disorders. Type 7, Type 3, and Type 1 have the opposite pattern from that of Type 4. That is, they tend to perceive kinesthetically, not visually, and judge them visually, not kinesthetically. This difference can be seen in the following way. Type 4 tends to perceive the imaginary world, visually. On the other hand, Type 7, Type 3, and Type 1 tend to interact with the physical world through their kinesthetic functions. Type 4 tends to judge emotionally and kinesthetically. On the other hand, Type 7, Type 3, and Type 1 tend to make practical decisions with their visual functions, having clear visions with regard to planning. In this process, they use practical thinking, avoiding sensitive feelings. The people with type 6 personality tend to experience the mixture of visual perception and kinesthetic perception for both perceiving and judging. Auditory perception is located between visual and kinesthetic. The people with type 9 personality have a tendency to perceive many things auditorily. They are good listeners. A fetus, which symbolizes type 9, has already developed hearing ability in the womb, listening to the sound of heartbeats of his or her mother. Type 9 tends to expand this auditory experience to the visual world and the kinesthetic world in harmony. This tendency enables them to empathize with many different types. This is the perspective of empathy. Note. This figure was discussed in Chapter 2. Point 8 represents the Higgs particle and kinesthetic perception. Point 9 represents the phonon and auditory perception. And Point 1 represents the photon and visual perception. Space-time and perceptions This figure was discussed in Chapter 2, Section 3. By superimposing this figure on the figure of perception, we can infer the following relationships. Space, which is illustrated in this figure, is related to intuition. That is, intuitive perceptions are related to spatial visions. Then, time, which is illustrated in this figure, is related to thinking. That is, thinking is related to time sequential planning. As already discussed, intuition is a perceiving function, and thinking is a judging function. Therefore, the combination of intuition and thinking is related to the combination of space and time in the following way. Intuition enables us to perceive spatial visions. Subsequently, 
we will be able to turn them into reality by time sequential planning or theorization. Einstein, for example, saw symbolic visions intuitively, and then he theorized them by thinking. He integrated space and time to make the theory of space-time continuum. As indicated in Figure B, the combination of intuition and thinking is related to visualization. Visualizers can integrate space and time by the function of intuition and thinking. This is related to the function of the brilliancy diamond. The function of the brilliancy diamond was discussed in Chapter 1, Section 2. When the wisdom of the brilliancy, which is related to Type 1, is integrated into the wisdom of the diamond guidance, which is related to Type 5, the brilliancy diamond emerges. The perspective of Type 1 and Type 5 are complementary in terms of wisdom. Riso and Hudson describe this relationship in the following way. 1s and 5s both correspond to Jungian thinking types, the 1 to the extroverted thinking type, and the 5s to the introverted thinking type. 1s are deductive, operating from principles to specific applications, 5s are inductive, operating from given data to form more sweeping theories. Both are philosophical, and love knowledge. As described by Riso and Hudson, type 1 is deductive, and type 5 is inductive. Deduction. From a basic principle, deriving answers for individual issues. For example, the basic principle or premise of point 1 is, reality is perfect. From this basic principle, answers for individual issues are deduced. Because of this, an average type 1 tends to be perfectionistic. Induction From individual elements, or aspects, constructing a basic principle. For example, type 5 tends to observe many different aspects of reality. Then, he tries to integrate all aspects in order to induce a basic principle, which is a theory of everything. As discussed in Section 3, type 1 tends to be ESTJ or ISTJ. Also, there are some ENTJ type 1 and INTJ type 1. These types are related to deductive thinking. That is, the combination of introverted perceiving and extroverted thinking brings about deductive thinking. On the other hand, type 5 tends to be INTJ or INTP, and the latter, which is INTP, is related to inductive thinking. That is, the combination of extroverted intuition and introverted thinking brings about inductive thinking. Therefore, as discussed in Section 3, archetypal type 5 is INTP, not INTJ. Note. The integration of inductive thinking and deductive thinking was discussed in Chapter 1, Section 2. Instinct and Intuition. In this figure, the lower left domain represents infrared, and the upper right domain represents ultraviolet. The former is related to the function of instinct, and the latter is related to that of intuition. That is, instinctive perception is mainly kinesthetic, such as the gut feeling, and intuitive perception is mainly visual, such as spiritual vision. Chapter 4, Section 7, Brain Functions In this section, we will discuss the correlation between eneotypes and brain functions. First of all, we will discuss the connection between the brain and the body. The right side of the body represents yang, and the left side of the body represents yin. Then, the right side of the body is connected to the left side of the brain, and the left side of the body is connected to the right side of the brain. Because of this crossing structure, when the zeptiform is used to represent a brain, left and right are reversed, as illustrated. For example, Point 4 and point 5 are located in the right brain area. The right brain is intuitive, and, as discussed in some previous sections, type 4 and type 5 are intuitive types. Note 1. A yin channel, which is called eta, is located on the left side of the body. On the other hand, a yang channel, which is called pin gala, is located on the right side of the body. Also, according to some Sufi teachings, the red essence, which represents a yang quality, tends to be experienced on the right side of the body. No two. The reversal of right and left, in terms of yin and yang, can also be seen at the heart area. The right heart, which is the spiritual heart, 
is connected to the left side of the body. On the other hand, the left heart, which is the physical heart, is connected to the right side of the body. According to Ramana Maharshi and some other spiritual teachers, the spiritual heart is located on the right side of the chest. As already discussed, when the zeptiform is used to represent the structure of a brain, the right side and the left side are reversed, as illustrated. But, in this section, we use a mirror image. That is, the left side represents the left brain, and the right side represents the right brain. Creativity and negativity of the right brain. An artistic type with her highly activated right brain tends to suffer from mood disorders. According to research by K. Redfield Jameson, people with mood disorders account for approximately 5% of the population. In the case of artists and writers, it reaches approximately 30%. Furthermore, in the case of poets, this figure rises to about 50%, because poets are usually more right-brain oriented than other writers. The language centers are located in the left brain, but sensitive people like poets, especially women, have extended language centers in their right brains. Therefore, when they create works of art using a language, their negatively oriented right brains tend to be activated. This tendency is most commonly seen in type 4. As already discussed, type 4 is a right brain type. Defense Mechanisms As illustrated in this figure, type 7, type 3, and type 2 belong to the left brain types. The left brain tends to cause defense mechanisms. Defense mechanisms are unconscious strategies to deal with inconvenient facts. They are used to avoid negative things in order to maintain positivity. According to some scientific research, this tendency is strongly related to the characteristics of extroverts. As we already know, type 7, type 3, and type 2 are extroverts. There are many different types of defense mechanisms. We will discuss three of them. Denial. Refusal to accept inconvenient facts. Type 7 has a tendency to be attached to pleasurable experiences and tends to deny any negative experience. Type 2 has a tendency to be attached to an angel-like self-image and tends to deny any beast-like self-image. Riso and Hudson said, The essence of the problem of type 2 is that even average 2s have difficulty seeing themselves as they really are. They must see themselves only in positive terms. Twos deny that they have any hostile feelings whatsoever, concealing their aggressions not only from others, but also from themselves, their self-image prohibits them from being openly hostile. They therefore deny to themselves, and to others, that they have any selfish or aggressive motives whatsoever. Type 3 has a tendency to be attached to a successful or sophisticated self-image and any counter-self-image, which is related to social failure, tends to be denied. Pathological lying Pathological lying is the tendency to make up stories in order to maintain self-esteem and or comfort. Type 7 has a tendency to make up stories in order to have enjoyable life situations. Type 2 has a tendency to make up stories in order to create an altruistic self-image. According to Riso and Hudson, both Type 7 and Type 2 have a tendency to have histrionic personality disorder, and one of the main characteristics of this disorder is pathological lying. Type 3 has a tendency to make up stories in order to create a successful and sophisticated self-image. Reaction formation Reaction formation is the tendency to deny an unwanted real intention by expressing its opposite self-image often in an exaggerated way. For example, type 2 does not want to be seen as needy. Therefore, she tends to express its opposite intention in an exaggerated way. According to Gilbert Becker, extroverts tend to experience denial, repression, and reaction formation. These are the tendencies not to face inconvenient facts. On the other hand, introverts tend to experience rumination, that is the process of continuously thinking about the same thoughts, which tend to be sad or dark. As we can see, the defense mechanisms, which are related to the denial of the dark side, 
tend to be experienced by extroverts. This figure was mainly discussed in Chapter 1, Section 4. As indicated in this figure, among all extroverted enneotypes, Type 1 is the least extroverted. Related to this, Type 1 does not tend to deny negative aspects of reality. Point 8 represents the brainstem type, or the instinctive type. Because of this, unlike other extroverts, eights tend to be cautious about negative aspects of reality for their own survival. The right eyesight and the left eyesight. As illustrated in this figure, the left brain perceives the right visual field, and the right brain perceives the left visual field. People with severe right brain damage, for example, cannot perceive the left visual field. Also, they tend to behave as if the left side of the world does not exist. This is called hemispatial neglect. In contrast, people with severe left brain damage rarely exhibit this kind of neglect. They might not be able to see the right visual field physically, but they do not neglect it mentally. There are two main reasons for this difference. Reason 1. Defense mechanisms, such as denial and pathological lying, are mainly caused by the left brain, not by the right brain. Reason 2. The left brain processes information from the right spatial field only. On the other hand, the right brain processes information from both, the left and right. That is, the left visual field might be lost, but the right brain does not neglect the existence of the left spatial field. Also, as we will see later, a person with highly developed spatial perception has a highly developed parietal lobe of the right brain. Note 1. According to Dr. Richard Davidson, when people are thinking about negative things, they tend to look to the left, indicating the activation of the right brain, which is the negative brain. As we can see, the left visual field and the right brain are connected. Note 2. When People are lying, denying the fact. They tend to look to the upper right. It indicates the activation of the left brain. On the other hand, when people are recalling a fact, they tend to look to the upper left. It indicates the activation of the right brain. As we can see, the left brain tends to deny the fact in order to deny negative things. On the other hand, the right brain tends to face the fact, facing negativity. As we have discussed, the tendency of self-deception can be seen more clearly in the characteristics of extroverts than those of introverts. This research was conducted by the following people. According to their research, the tendency of deception can be seen more clearly in the characteristics of extroverts with a high level of intelligence. That is, extroverts with higher IQ tend to use deception in order to achieve their goals. For example, self-deceptive rationalization, which is one type of defense mechanism, tends to be used by extroverts more than introverts. That is the action of attempting to explain or justify one's behavior in a seemingly logical manner. This tendency can be seen the most clearly in the characteristics of type 3. Related to this, the shadow aspect of type 3 is called deceit. As we have seen, Extroverts tend to hide reality in order to be practical. On the other hand, according to their research, this tendency can be seen less often in the characteristics of introverts, regardless of the level of their intelligence. Integration of Shadows As already discussed, Type 7, Type 2, and Type 3 are positive types, and they tend to deny negative aspects of reality. In order to face negativity, or shadows, they need to experience the process from 7 to 5, from 2 to 4, and from 3 to 6. The process from 7 to 5, and from 2 to 4, are deepening processes. Also, the process from 3 to 6 brings about the process of deepening, as we have seen in Chapter 1, Section 7. These processes are needed to acquire the insight of introverts in order to integrate shadows, or negativity which have been denied by defense mechanisms. Type 6, which is the ambivert, is located in the corpus callosum area, 
which is the connection between the left brain and the right brain. A person with a thick corpus callosum tends to experience the conflict between the left brain and the right brain. In the process from type 3 to type 6, type 3 needs to overcome this conflict, as we have seen in Chapter 1, Section 7. As discussed in that section, the process from point 3 to point 6 is experienced as the process from point 3 to point 1 to point 2 to point 4 and to point 6. As we can see, this process includes a deepening process. The right brain brings about the insight to recognize defense mechanisms. Therefore, when the right brain is damaged, defense mechanisms tend to be amplified. This tendency has been described by many authors, such as Oliver Sacks and Ramachandran. Analytical and Integral The left brain is analytical, focusing on details. On the other hand, the right brain is integrative, focusing on the whole. The right brain takes in the analytical information from the left brain, and it integrates details to see the whole picture. Type 5, which corresponds to the thinking center of the right brain, is good at both analytical thinking as well as integrative thinking. The holy idea of type 5 is holy omniscience. From the perspective of holy omniscience, the essential functions of analysis as well as integration tend to arise. This essential aspect is called the diamond guidance. Alma said, In its functioning, the diamond guidance uses two primary faculties, two operations, in an organically combined way, analysis and synthesis. It combines the functioning of the right and left hemispheres of the brain in a unified action of understanding. Type 4, which corresponds to the emotion center of the right brain, is good at both analytical and integrative skills in terms of aesthetic qualities. The holy idea of type 4 is holy origin. From the perspective of holy origin, the essential functions of self-realization tend to arise. This essential aspect is called the essential self, which is also called the point. It is experienced as a point of light. Then, multiple points of light in your timeline are connected to form the thread. When this process is facilitated by the function of the diamond guidance of type 5, it is experienced as the process from the point diamond to the thread diamond. In terms of will and action, or decision-making and execution, the function of the left brain dominates the right brain, but, the right brain can see the whole picture, and that is the insight to integrate willpower and action power. This integration was discussed in Chapter 1. The Visual Perception of the Brain Visual information is perceived by the visual cortex, which is located in the occipital lobe. Then, this information is sent to the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe. The former recognizes the visual information of space, and the latter recognizes that of objects. In other words, the former recognizes where, and the latter recognizes what. According to the theory of cognitive modes, the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe are categorized as the top brain, and the temporal lobe and the occipital lobe are categorized as the bottom brain. This theory also states the following. The top brain is related to spatial visualization, and the bottom brain is related to object visualization. The former focuses on where, which includes location, direction, distance, etc. The latter focuses on what, which includes shape, texture, color, etc. Scientists tend to be the top brain type, and artists tend to be the bottom brain type. Stephen Coslin and Wayne Miller state the following. The scientists perform the top brain, spatial task, better than the artists, but the artists perform the bottom brain, grain resolution task, better than the scientists. Visual artists scored higher on object imagery than did scientists or humanists, whereas scientists scored higher on spatial imagery than did artists or humanists. As described, scientists tend to be the top brain type, and artists tend to be the bottom brain type. These two types are represented by point 0.5 and point 0.4, respectively, as illustrated. In this figure, we are using a mirror image. That is, the left side represents the left brain, and the right side represents the right brain. 
As discussed previously, spatial perception is mainly processed by the right brain. That is the function of the right top brain. Therefore, when the right top brain is damaged, hemispatial neglect tends to happen. Spatial visualization, which is related to the parietal lobe of the right brain, is required for geometrical perception, such as geometrical recognition of space-time. Therefore, there are many scientists who have a highly developed parietal lobe of the right brain. Einstein was one of them. This was confirmed by the autopsy of his brain. Point 5 is located in this area, as illustrated. Related to this, Einstein is considered to be type 5 by many Enneagram specialists. Object visualization, which is related to the temporal lobe, is required for artistic perception, such as painting and sculpting. Therefore, there are many artists who have highly developed temporal lobes. This function is related to the characteristic of type 4, as illustrated. This figure was discussed in section 6. In this figure, the red area is related to the kinesthetic perception, and the blue area is related to the visual perception. The combination of sensing and feeling is related to kinesthetic perception. On the other hand, the combination of intuiting and thinking is related to visual perception. As we can see in this figure, point 4, which represents object visualization, is the mixture of visual and kinesthetic. That is, object visualization is more kinesthetic than spatial visualization. For example, when artists are visualizing the texture of an object, they tend to feel the quality of the texture. This is a kinesthetic experience of the texture. As we have seen, by using the structure of the zeptiform, we can find the correlation between eneotypes and the brain structure. Chapter 4, Section 8, Minin, Feminine, and Masculine, Part 1 The three layers of the zeptiform represent the qualities of minin, feminine, and masculine, as illustrated. Minin qualities are intellectuality, logicality, rationality, systemic thinking, etc. Feminine qualities are sensitivity, sensibility, geniality, sympathy, empathy, etc. Masculine qualities are vitality, physicality, wildness, strength, kinesthetic, etc. In general, the male quality is considered to be the masculine quality, but this designation is not accurate. For example, Type 5 represents one type of male quality, but this male quality is not the masculine quality. The male quality of type 5 is intellectuality, logicality, rationality, or systemic thinking. In the zeptiform theory, it is called the minin quality. As discussed in section 3, type 5 tends to be INTJ or INTP. With that said, according to MBTI manual, about 8.1% of men are these types. On the other hand, in the case of women, only 2.6% are these types. The masculine quality represents vitality, physicality, wildness, strength, and kinesthetic. Type 8 tends to have this quality. It represents primordial nature, which is the state before the sexual duality of male-female manifests. That is, the masculine quality is the fundamental base of both, the male nature and the female nature. The beast is neither male nor female, but the beast tends to be seen as a male for several reasons. For example, the process from point 8 to point 5 brings about an unhealthy combination between the masculine quality and the minin quality. In this process, the masculine quality is used to dominate others, including feminine qualities, and that is related to androcentrism. Napoleon, for example, is considered to be type 8. This tendency causes the negative affiliation between the masculine quality and the male quality. The functioning mode of type 3 represents the pragmatic male quality, and it includes both the minin quality and masculine quality. But this pragmatic mode dissociates from the feminine quality. Related to this, the male quality tends to be equated with the masculine quality. For example, 
Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, are type 3. Type 1, which represents a paternal male quality, is one type of the Minin quality. He tends to suppress some aspects of the beast-like masculine quality, but, unlike type 5 and type 9, he does not dissociate from the beast. Type 1 has a tendency to fight against the beast within. That is, the superego of type 1 has a tendency to fight against the Eid of himself. In other words, type 1 has the tendency to use the strength of the beast in order to fight against the beast. Therefore, type 1 tends to exhibit the qualities of both, the minin quality and the masculine quality. The authoritative paternal figure of point 1 is intrinsically connected to the masculine quality. As discussed in section 3, type 1 tends to be ESTJ or ISTJ. With that said, according to MBTI manual, about 28% of men are these types. On the other hand, in the case of women, only 13% are these types. Type 9, type 2, and type 4 represent feminine qualities. The feminine quality of type 2 is intrinsically connected to the masculine quality of type 8. But, type 2 has a tendency to deny the masculine quality of herself, covering up the beast within. She tends to use the masculine quality unconsciously. This is one of the reasons as to why the masculine quality tends not to be equated with the female quality. As discussed in Section 3, Type 2 tends to be ESFJ. With that said, according to MBTI manual, about 17% of women are ESFJ. On the other hand, in the case of men, only 7.5% are this type. The process from point 2 to point 8 can be seen in the following way. Estrogen, which is the feminine quality, is represented by point 2. Then, in the process from point 2 to point 8, it is connected to testosterone, which is the masculine quality. In general, estrogen decreases aggression as well as anxiety, but when? It is working with testosterone. It promotes maternal aggression. In this process, type 2 tends to use the masculine quality in a destructive way. Also, she tends to deny it as we have already discussed. The process from point 8 to point 2 can be seen in the following way. Testosterone, which represents the masculine quality, can be converted to estrogen, which represents the feminine quality. And, this process cannot be reversed. That is, estrogen cannot be converted to testosterone. Because of this, the masculine quality can be seen as the most foundational quality of all qualities. The process from point 8 to point 5 was discussed previously. In terms of brain science, the process from point 8 to point 5 can be seen in the following way. Testosterone which represents the masculine quality of type 8, can be used for the masculinization of the brain. However, in the zeptiform theory, it is called meninization, not masculinization. Masculinization is the enhancement of type 8 qualities, but meninization is the enhancement of type 5 qualities. The meninization of the brain will be discussed later. According to Claudio Naranjo, in type 2 and type 4, Statistically, there are more women than men. The same can be said for type 9. But, in some contexts, type 9 represents the neutrality of gender. That is related to the ideology of transgender rights, and that was discussed in Chapter 3. Type 6 is mainly connected to the paternal value system of point 1, representing one type of the men in quality. But, the quality of type 6 tends to shift from one state to another rapidly and frequently. In some situations, type 6 is strongly connected to the sensitivity of feminine quality. At the same time, the aggressiveness of masculine quality is activated. This is the tendency of counterphobic type 6. In the previous section, we discussed the functions of the top brain and the bottom brain. Then, in this section, we will use this categorization in order to analyze the qualities of minin and feminine. Note. In this context, the bottom brain includes the emotion center of the brain, which is the limbic system. 
spatial, and linguistic. Point 5 in the top right brain area represents spatial competence. On the other hand, point 2 in the bottom left brain area represents linguistic competence. Spatial competence is related to the right parietal lobe. Men are superior in this respect, which accounts for the biggest statistical difference between men and women. The main reason for this difference is as follows. In early life, the development of men's left brain is restrained temporarily by androgens, which are male hormones. Then, in order to compensate for this underdevelopment of the left brain, the development of the right brain is enhanced. Related to this tendency, savant syndrome, autism, and left-handedness are more often seen in males than in females. These are related to the inferiority of the left brain and the superiority of the right brain. Many savants, who are good at picturing sceneries and reading maps, have highly developed spatial competence, and men are good at this kind of task. This superiority in spatial competence is represented by point five. In the Zeptiform theory, it is called the meaninization of the brain, as discussed previously. Linguistic competence is related to the left temporal lobe. Women are superior in this respect, which accounts for the second biggest statistical difference between men and women. The main reason for this difference is as follows. As discussed previously, in early life, the development of men's left brains is restrained temporarily by androgens. Consequently, women have superior linguistic competence compared to men. Because of this, girls begin to speak earlier than boys. This superiority in linguistic competence is represented by point two, as type two likes conversation. In the case of women, the linguistic center is also located in the right brain. This is represented by point four, as illustrated. Because of this extension, women's conversations tend to include sensitive qualities of the right brain. Practicality and sensitivity. Point one, point three, and point seven in the top left brain area represent practicality. In particular, the pragmatic quality is represented by the functioning mode of point three. On the other hand, point four in the bottom right brain area represents sensitivity. As we can see, in terms of practical versus sensitive, the left brain represents male qualities and the right brain represents female qualities. Men tend to be practical and women tend to be sensitive. Systemizing and empathizing. The top brain is related to the function of systemizing and the bottom brain is related to the function of empathizing. Men tend to be good at systemizing and women tend to be good at empathizing. In other words, men tend to be good at managing systems, and women tend to be good at caring for people. The Big Five Personality Traits In this figure, the Big Five Personality Traits are listed. These are extroversion versus introversion, openness to experience, conscientiousness, agreeableness, and neuroticism. First of all, we will analyze the quality of extroversion. The quality of extroversion has several aspects, such as assertiveness and warmness. These are two aspects of extroversion. Men tend to be high on assertiveness, and women tend to be high on warmness. The former, assertiveness, is represented by type 7, type 3, and type 1. On the other hand, the latter, warmness, is represented by type 2. They are all extroverts, and they tend to be connected to the strength of point 8. However, in the case of type 2, the aggressiveness of the type 8 quality tends to be denied. In terms of openness to experience, men tend to be open to thinking about new ideas, and women tend to be open to the experience of feelings. That is related to the difference between systemizing and empathizing. That is, systemic thinking is related to the openness to new ideas and empathy is related to the openness to the experience of feelings. In terms of conscientiousness, men tend to have a higher score than women, especially in terms of industriousness. It is represented by type 1. In terms of agreeableness, women tend to have a higher score than men. It is represented by type 9. In terms of neuroticism, women tend to have a higher score than men. It is especially represented by type 4.
The qualities of minin, feminine, and masculine will further be discussed in the next section. Chapter 4, Section 9, Minin, Feminine, and Masculine, Part 2 As discussed in the previous section, the difference between systemizing and emphasizing is related to the difference between men and women. That is, men tend to be good at systemizing, and women tend to be good at emphasizing. With that said, according to the research by Jonathan Haidt, we can see the following relationship. Libertarians are the highest on systemizing and the lowest on empathizing. Related to this, among libertarians, there are more men than women. Conversely, liberals are the lowest on systemizing and the highest on empathizing. Related to this, among liberals, there are more women than men. Conservatives are in the middle on both, systemizing and empathizing. But, in terms of men and women, there are more men than women in conservatives. When systemizing and economic liberty are compared, we can see the correlation between these two aspects. The people, who tend to be good at systemizing, tend to value economic liberty. This figure was discussed in Chapter 3, Section 5. Economic liberty is one type of meritocratic liberty, and that is valued by libertarians and conservatives, as illustrated in this figure. The work of systemizing requires intellectuality. Related to this, according to the research by Jonathan Haidt, libertarians are the highest in IQ, and conservatives are the second. In the STEM field, which will be discussed later, you can see many libertarians. They are good at systemizing. The Nordic Gender Equality Paradox The Nordic countries are egalitarian countries. Therefore, in these countries, there is the equality of opportunity for men and women. Then, liberal social scientists predicted the following. When the equality of opportunity in society increases, the difference between men and women decreases. However, in the STEM field, exactly the opposite thing happened. The difference between men and women increased. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. In this figure, the vertical axis represents the degree of gender equality for opportunities. As we can see, Nordic countries are high on gender equality for opportunities. The horizontal axis represents the percentage of women among STEM graduates. As we can see in this figure, as the degree of gender equality for opportunity increases, the number of women in the STEM field decreases. As illustrated in blue, there is no country which is high in both gender equality and female STEM graduates. The same result has been replicated by many scientists. Therefore, this finding is considered to be one of the most reliable findings in social science. The London Times, for example, stated that it is now one of the best established findings in psychology. The reason for the increase in difference can be explained in the following way. In egalitarian countries, people can choose what they want to choose. The freedom of choice increases. Therefore, if men and women are interested in different things, the difference between men and women will be amplified. Women tend to be interested in people, and men tend to be interested in things. This is the difference between empathizing and systemizing. Because of this difference, men tend to choose the STEM field, and women do not. However, radical liberals do not want to accept this kind of objective fact because they want to achieve the equality of outcome. Consequently, there is the battle between political correctness versus scientific correctness, or subjective opinion versus objective fact. This political battle was discussed in Chapter 3. In this figure, the vertical axis represents the equality of opportunity for men and women, and the horizontal axis represents the differences between men and women in personality traits, the Big Five personality traits. In gender equality countries, the differences between men and women are amplified, as illustrated. The reason is the same as the reason for the STEM field issue. The elimination of restriction and the amplification of gender differences are intrinsically related. As we become freer, the genetic influence also becomes freer, and thus the difference between us increases. It is called genetic amplification, as discussed in Chapter 1, Section 6. 
Consequently, for example, the number of women in the STEM field decreases, as illustrated in this figure. As discussed in this section, systemizing and empathizing are related to men and women. In the same way, justifying and empathizing are related to men and women. That is, men tend to value justice, and women tend to value empathy or care. In terms of justice, conservatives have the highest score, but, as already discussed, in terms of systemizing, libertarians have the highest score. In other words, libertarians and conservatives represent two different aspects of male archetypes. Type 7, Type 3, and Type 5 are more related to meritocratic liberty, and Type 1 and Type 6 are more related to justice. This figure was mainly discussed in Chapter 1. The left side represents the womb realm, and the right side represents the diamond realm. In order to integrate these two realms, we need to integrate the qualities of minin, feminine, and masculine. That is related to the solution to the hierarchy problem. The hierarchy problem was discussed in the three previous chapters. In this chapter, we use the Zepta form in order to integrate eneotypes, MBTI types, and the structure of the brain. Also, we discussed a new way of seeing gender categorization. Then, in the next chapter, we will integrate the tree of life.